Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Aurea Bond and today I'm very excited, not only for my new peppy intro music that I'm pretty excited about, but because I'm going to dive into my sketchbook and show you a little bit about how I work with watercolors and inks to create loose abstract landscapes, one of my favorite things to do. You'll discover how I play with light and dark with this moody palette and bring in a few more saturated colors and mark making tools to spice it all up. So let's get started. So today I'll be working in my Stratmore watercolor sketchbook. I love it, it takes a lot of water, it, it absorbs it nicely and it just holds it when I just get these watery landscapes going. I've also picked out some watercolors that were made by an artisan watercolor producer. She sells on Etsy and her name is Artsy Oubliette and I just love her colors. They're so moody. In fact, Oubliette means dungeon in French. So you can get, you're pretty sure you can get some pretty moody colors over there. Very lovely, granulating, earthy tones that I love. Another product that I'm really fascinated with and use a lot in my work is the Echo Line Black. It's really fun. It's strange because it can kind of shift depending on the color on the paper that you're using. And I just enjoy using it and mixing it with my inks. It has a great um, satisfying quality to it when you put on a little salt, which we'll get to here in a second. Oftentimes I just take a deep breath when I'm looking at the white page and I take the darkest ink I have. Sometimes I start with a, a lighter ink, but oftentimes I grab that dark ink first and just put down some kind of striking lines just to get me going and, and feeling the mood of the piece overall. I do have to work pretty quickly, especially today. Uh, it's so hot in my studio. The paper is even warm to touch, it seems, because it's just so hot outside. So I'm working quickly, adding paler layers and even at this moment a little touch of salt to the ink as I said it just makes such a nice blooming effect right on that black ink which actually becomes more of a, a rich dark purple with almost golden highlights I don't know it just depends on the paper you're working with and you play you play around with it and I found that it makes different results with different papers Again, it is very warm in my studio at the moment. The paper is warm. The inks are drying quickly. The watercolors are absorbing quickly into the paper. So I'm just working kind of quickly, um, adding washes as I go to keep some movement going because i that's one of my loves is watching them kind of blend and combine. It's actually one of the things I really love or what draws me to working with watercolors and inks in general is that it really obligates you to be in that moment with them. You can't really come back later and hope to work on them. I mean, you can and I do, but I know that it's always these first marks and the first part of the session that is usually the best and I can come back and work on stuff, like I said, and I do, but it's just something, it's a very immediate form, a very immediate medium, you could say, to work with. And in that way, it's kind of meditative and just helps you stay in that present moment. Ironically, these colors that I've chosen today are from her Endless Winter Collection. Here I am on the hottest day of the year so far, kind of soaking in these cooler colors mauves and channeling some storm clouds, you could say, leaving in some white space for some air. But just really, these are the colors where, that make me the happiest. Honestly, I just lean towards cooler tones. And I just thought today, why not start with the colors I love? This is my happy place. These are the things that light me up. And um, that's what I tend to reach for when I decide to sit down and spend some time art making or just doing a loose thing in my sketchbook. I just really do want to choose the things that make me happy, that I'm drawn to, and not really question them. Okay, maybe dark, earthy colors aren't for everybody. But right now, that's where I'm at, and they're feeling good. So that's why I've chosen them. 
oftentimes I, I realize I have a lot of these colors even in my wardrobe or around my house. And I've just come to the point in my life where I'm not going to question that or doubt that. In fact, I'm going to lean into it. This is my place. This is where I want to explore right now. And like I said, they light me up and I just really enjoy working with them. So why not? That said, I'm noticing that the colors are a little bit muted, less saturated. They are kind of blending together beautifully, I think. I love the different tones. But I, at that point, I always like to add something that might make it pop a little bit, add a little contrast, so I can find a little bit of di differences in the painting and or whatever sketch or watercolor I'm working on. I like to add something that might make it pop or something that can catch your eye, just some contrast. So I know that I, I do at times like to go deep into these colors that I really love and the palette, but then I have to pull in and think, okay, where's the contrast? Where can I bring in some more interest? Where can I jazz it up with a little bit of darkness or some new mark making? Another product I've been experimenting with recently is fabric dye as opposed to a traditional pigment. I love the way it blooms. It does take some fiddling with to get used to. You can overdo it at times and it does stain your fingers. You need to be careful, but it has a lot of potential. Another element I like to incorporate into my work is abstract calligraphy or asemic writing. Now, it doesn't have any semantic value to it, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't mean anything. I think that these types of kind of scribbles, if you will, little gestures, they not only feel good, but they really register with people's eyes and they kind of, to me, they just give kind of a poetic quality to your work. And I don't know, I just like incorporating them. Here I'm using a synthetic squirrel tail brush that is super fine and super soft. The more I push, the bigger the strokes and the thicker they become. Sometimes I just like to use delicate little gestures and I hold the brush just barely, barely tipping at the tip of the paper and, and touching there. So you can get different effects with it and it's just fun to play with and I'll be sharing more about it in the future as well. time has come one of my favorite moments after a workout like this is taking some of this yucky tape off and getting those clean edges exposed and seeing where we're at and I'm really liking it it's a little moodier than I was actually going for I was but you know I think 
that turquoise and pink did a nice job of breaking up some of the the heaviness. But again, I, I'm really drawn to those earthy tones. So it's just fun to play with both and see how I can combine them. I love this little top corner with the calligraphy up there and the little squiggles and, and asemic writing, the, the little spots of the Caran d'Ache oil pastels were really pretty too. I just, I'm pretty satisfied. And just when you thought you got rid of me, I'm back. At least that's maybe what my sketchbook is thinking. Um, it just happens to me sometimes when I, I finish and I pull off the tape, I still find a few things I could add. And this time it was some sumonagashi pieces that I had made in a previous session. I just like the light layers and I, I'm working on experimenting with incorporating them into my pieces. If you're at all interested in learning more about sumonagashi, this Japanese marbling technique, be sure to look up in this right-hand corner here. I'm going to put a tab up there that you can click on that will lead you to my course I did that explains how you do this technique. It's super fun and it's easy to do. It does. There are some kinks to work out. There is some trial and error surely involved, but it is a fun way to make some kind of different textural papers that you can incorporate into your mixed media pieces and I hope you gave it a look. And if you're someone who's drawn to more colorful prints and patterns, you may want to check out my YouTube tutorial on colorful sumonagashi techniques. I'll put that link up in the corner as well. These papers make wonderful collage pieces and are just super fun to add to your mixed media pieces. I'm adding them here with a matte medium. I like to use a matte gel medium because it just doesn't have that extra shine when they're dried. And they just look like they've just blended perfectly with the other mediums on the paper, the watercolors and the inks. These little elements are very subtle, but I really like how they incorporated here in the piece. You can't really tell that they weren't painted or, I don't know, I just, I'm really enjoying working with them and I, I hope you give them a shot too. And I just wanted to thank you all for joining me, staying here until the end. Please, um, if you enjoy these videos, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you along here for this, this path I'm on, putting these videos up and sharing some of my knowledge. And let me know what you think. I'm really curious. Look, this is a learning process for me too, but I'm glad to have you here and learning together. And thanks again, and I'll see you soon.